Tomo News presents Bad Sportsmanship. Look, you can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. That ball was- How professional cyclists can cheat using hidden electric motors. The Union Cycliste Internationale has confirmed this week that the bicycle used by Belgian pro cyclist Femke van der Drescher during the World Championship in Belgium contained a hidden motor. Drescher says she never cheated and that the bike in question belongs to a friend. According to reports, she explained it was given to her in error by a mechanic before the under-23 race at the World Cyclocross Championship on Sunday. Dreschel reportedly pulled out of the race due to a mechanical problem, and the motor was found during an inspection. Professional cycling regulators are increasingly concerned by the use of hidden motors, but how does the technology work? When cycling, some cyclists employ the use of a hidden motor to help them move faster. A motor such as the Vivax Assist can be installed in the seat tube in a bicycle frame. Motors like these are powered by a battery, placed either inside the bicycle frame, in a saddlebag under the seat, or in a faux water bottle. These motors can be operated in a number of ways. A sensor installed close to the pedals and connected to the motor detects the cyclist's pace. At higher speeds, the motor runs faster, helping the rider move quicker. Another way to use the motor is by pressing a switch or lever on the handlebars. However, these are visible and easily detectable. Cycling competition regulators can detect motors by using a computer, which read radio frequencies emitted by the devices, or with the use of x-ray machines similar to the ones used in airports. The practice, also known as mechanical doping, can lead to heavy fines as well as long bans for offenders. China upset after Australian swimmer calls Yang a doper. Australian swimmer Mac Horton has set off a media firestorm after calling China's Sun Yang a doper. In 2014, Sun Yang served a three-month suspension after testing positive for trimetazidine, a stimulant banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. On the opening day of the Olympic Games, Horton edged out Sun Yang to win gold in the men's 400-meter freestyle. During a press conference, Horton was asked about a report that Sun Yang had splashed him days earlier while they were in the training pool. When Horton responded that he has no time or respect for drug cheats, the comment sparked widespread rage from the people of China, leading to demands for an apology. Australia has refused to do so, supporting Horton in speaking out about the need for a clean sport. Sun Yang's fans have responded with support on social media using the hashtag Sun Yang Don't Cry to unleash hate and ridicule on his Aussie rival. Meanwhile, Sun Yang's detractors are steadfast in pointing out that the truth cannot be washed away. After claiming gold in the 200-meter freestyle, Yang says he feels the pressure valve has been released. Now the stage is set for a grand finale as Horton and Sun Yang compete again in the 1,500-meter freestyle on the final day of the games in Rio. California high school football player smears icy hot on opponent's face. La Cañada High School has released a video from a football match against the Bishop Mora Salesian Mustangs that allegedly shows a Salesian player smearing icy hot on the face of La Cañada player Angel Salazar. The Mustangs were leading the Spartans 14 zip late in the third quarter when one player decided to rub it in, literally. The play was dead. It appears as though the culprit was number 16, Ramey Johnson, who reached under Salazar's helmet to deliver the unwelcome dose of muscle ointment. Salazar ran to the ref as he pointed to the cream on his face. He then ran to his sideline in need of relief. The game was put on hold while the refs investigated. The Valley Sun reports that Johnson's pants had a white substance on them and that he was seen taking off his gloves and washing his hands. The refs weren't able to prove that any wrongdoing took place, so the game resumed after a few minutes. The refs said they planned to report the incident to the California Interscholastic Federation. Johnson appears to be a four-star recruit who is already committed to UCLA. Will this video put his football future on ice? Or will he just end up at Baylor? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Buffalo Bills under attack by laser-wielding NFL fans. The Buffalo Bills beat the Detroit Lions 17-14 on Sunday, but one Lions fan tried to turn the tables using technology. What, huh, you ask? That's right, lasers. Bills quarterback Kyle Orton missed a pass after being shot in the face with a green laser. Later, the Bills were down 11 points when Colton Schmidt was blasted while holding for a 50-yard field goal attempt. 
causing Dan Carpenter's kick to go way, way off. Security never found the mystery laser lion. Who turned out to be this guy, Marco Bezlatch, who bragged about his lasering before and during the game on Twitter. Now the NFL is saying Bezlatch could get a lifetime ban from attending games. And he'll need more than a laser if any Bills fans get a hold of him. Ouch. Texans fans get ticks canceled by Hating's Jags fan. Now you should know by now that you should not post personal info on the net because the amount of haterade some folks drink will cause stuff like this to happen on the daily. Last week, Alice Rodriguez was understandably ecstatic that the, her boyfriend, Carlos, surprised her with airline tickets to Jacksonville, Florida to see their Houston Texans take on the Jaguars. So much so, in fact, she posted a picture of the boarding pass to a Facebook group. Well, hate is gonna hate, and that's exactly what some Jaguar fan troll calling himself Duval Undertaker did. He called up Southwest Airlines and had their tickets canceled, then posted a message on Twitter bragging about it. What a douche. Now, it didn't go unnoticed because a confirmation email is always sent out. The pair called Southwest Airlines to correct the issue, and they promptly reissued new tickets. And since the whole story went viral, let's just say the Jacksonville fans showed off their hospitality to the gracious pair. The Jags upgraded their ticks to field passes, and fans there showed them love by giving them souvenirs, inviting them to tailgate, and generally just being a great bunch of rival fans. As for Duval Undertaker, well, he totally deleted all of his social network accounts and is back in school taking douchebaggery 101. Viral video shows two kids brawling on a golf course. Footage posted to Live League this week shows two kids throw down on a golf course. Now golf is typically a gentleman's game, so we can't imagine why these two boys started kicking the crap out of each other. The big guy in blue is shoved down. And it's here that the golf course is transformed into a boxing ring as things escalate between these two junior sluggers. Soon the other guy is pushed down but gets back up and throws a punch. <laughs> and after a while the blue shirted fella grabs a club and wallops the other guy's bag but things soon calm down after that. So what's the moral of the story? Well, it's a toughie, but we'd say don't mix angry kids, brawling and golf clubs. Savvy? Brawl breaks out between cops and firefighters at annual hockey game. New York's finest was up against New York's bravest at their annual charity hockey game. They were tied 3-3 in the third period when this happened. In violent glory not seen since Jean-Claude Van Damme had to save the Pittsburgh Penguins from domestic terrorists, everyone started beating the shit out of everyone else. They're yelling, PD sucks, if you can't make it out. The game was delayed for 25 minutes, but by the end, everyone was friends again, and New York's Men in Blue took home the win 8-5. Peyton Manning has definitely never taken PEDs. So he claims. Al Jazeera dropped a bomb on the sporting world over the weekend. Al Jazeera's The Dark Side claims that in 2011, an Indianapolis anti-aging clinic took Peyton Manning up with human growth hormone, a banned PED by the NFL, when he was recovering from neck surgery. Al Jazeera sent washed-up British hurdler Liam Collins undercover in an attempt to expose the widespread use of PEDs in sports. Collins met pharmacist Charlie Sly, who worked at the Geyer Institute in 2011 and said he was part of a team that helped Peyton recover from surgery. Sly alleged the clinic, milk growth hormone, and other drugs to Manning's wife, Ashley, to keep Peyton's name clean. Sly also said Manning and his wife came to the clinic after hours for IV treatments. The NFL banned HGH in 2011, but didn't start testing for it until 2014. Manning says he's furious and disgusted at the Al Jazeera report and denies having ever used HGH while Sly has tried to backtrack and recant his statements. But honestly, does anyone really care that Manning used HGH to recover from broken neck? Wouldn't you? 
cops and firefighters football charity match turns violent. Ever wanted to enjoy the spectacle of adult cops and firemen duking it out on a football field? No? Must just be Marijuana Man. Due to YouTube's guidelines on violent or graphic content, we can't show you the entire thing here, but it's available on our website via the link in the description. This past weekend, New York firefighters and cops held their annual charity match on Coney Island, with the latter winning 29 to 13. Proceeds from the game went to charities both emergency services support, but as you can see, they weren't exactly charitable with each other. The New York Daily News reports the fracas began when players confronted each other during the post-game handshake. One firefighter was seen bleeding after the fight broke out, while another was reportedly decked as well. Interestingly, there's no reports of anyone being disciplined for the scuffles. But what's your take? Is this the kind of sportsmanship you'd expect from New York's finest and New York's bravest during a charity match? Or should they try boxing or MMA instead of football next year? Poor Swiss goalie may sue after fans urinate into his water bottle. Switzerland, we expected better from you. We know you as a land of neutral, watchmaking, sports-loving mountain yodelers with a fetish for bank secrecy, not a nation of pissing morons. The honorable Swiss name has been tarnished by some incredibly bad sportsmanship that occurred over the weekend. As football club FC Murray was playing FC Baden, fans convinced a water boy to bring them the water bottle of the opposing team's goalie, which they then urinated into. As soon as the goalkeeper took a sip, the miscreants laughed and chanted, you're gonna get AIDS. These idiots must have been yodeling the day viruses were discussed in school. The goalkeeper says after he took a first sip of the warm fluid, he thought, hmm, must be the hot sun. By the second sip, however, he knew something was very wrong. Goalie Reto Felder is now considering legal action and says he's still disgusted by the thought he drank piss. Not cool, dudes. Not cool at all. In today's The Locker Room, a charity softball game for burn victims in Delaware went all trailer park when a drunken husband and wife duo started brawling. Dagsboro Fire Captain Brandon Blades and his wife Cameo Blades got the charity softball game started by both getting blitzed. Brandon, with a BAC twice the legal driving limit, then apparently thought it was a good idea to start trash talking with the other team. Witnesses say Brandon then started swinging, which Brandon denies, and the festivities got underway. At one point during the drunken mess, somebody put Cameo in a headlock and tossed her to the ground. Fire Chief Brad Speakman got into the mix after the fight was already broken up, so Cameo decided to rush him from behind and sucker punch the chief, breaking his nose. Police charged Brandon and Cameo with disorderly conduct and tacked on a third-degree assault charge for Cameo busting Speakman's nose. NFL accused of slinging narcotics to former players. Eight former NFL players filed a lawsuit against the league on Tuesday, saying it illegally supplied them with narcotics and painkillers that led to addiction and long-term medical complications. The suit says the NFL handed out painkillers, anti-inflammatories, and sleep meds like it was Halloween in order to get injured players back on the field as quickly as possible, regardless of the long-term health concerns. Bears quarterback Jim McMahon says he suffered a broken neck and ankle but rather than sit out, he was given drugs and pushed back on the field. Oh yes, and he was popping 100 Percocet a month. Bears offensive lineman Keith Van Horn played an entire season on a broken leg and wasn't told about the injury for five years. As players retired, so did their drug connect. The suit claims the NFL unethically substituted pay meds for proper health care, 
to keep the NFL's tsunami of dollars flowing. More than 500 players have joined the suit. Quick, hand Commissioner Goodell some aspirin. A fraud moves into third on all time RBI list. Looks like Alex, I use Roy Rodriguez, moved into third on the all time RBI list. A fraud hit a three run homer off Kansas City Royals pitcher Chris Young in the third inning of Wednesday's 4 2 win at Yankee Stadium, giving him 1,995 career RBIs. With that hit, he passed Lou Gehrig's 1,993 RBIs and moved into third on the all time list. Rodriguez had already moved past Babe Ruth and his career, 1,992 career RBIs, although the RBI wasn't officially recognized as an official stat until 1920, and Ruth started playing in 1914. It's definitely an honor to be mentioned in the same breath as Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, Rodriguez said. Only thing is, Gehrig wasn't on the juice, and neither was Ruth. Ruth was definitely on the sauce though, but if anything, being drunk makes it even harder to play. Aroid missed all of last season because of his involvement in the Biogenesis drug ring. He entered this season with three years and 61 million left on his contract. Broncos Von Miller busted for urine swap fail. Suspended Broncos linebacker Von Miller was caught trying to cheat the NFL drug testing program with the help of a star-struck urine collector in Miami. The six-game suspension was originally just four due to Miller spilling a urine sample to be given to a tester. And then coming back later and giving a diluted one. The extra two games were for conspiring with the collector to pass off another sample as his own. A second collector noticed Miller wasn't in Miami at the time of the test. The NFL is now looking into new drug testing procedures which may involve fingerprint technology. Guess Miller took it too literally when he found out he would be playing at mile high. Should the NFL care about players smoking Mary Jane? Pack some comments.